Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and I want to help you feel confident with your production gear no matter where you're starting from. Today, we're going to be talking about the Behringer X32, specifically the configuration and preamp section of the board. This is video 106 of the series, so let's go ahead and dive in. So we have the Behringer X32 here, and the configuration and preamp section is this section that's up here on the top left of the console. And we can see that it's outlined in this darker area. So everything in this section here is part of the configuration and preamp. There's two ways to get to this section on the LCD screen. One is by pressing the view button here, or by pressing home, and then tabbing over by with our page select so we can see our config right here. So this is all the settings that we have in our configuration and preamp section. But let's go ahead and talk about the buttons and rotary knobs on the top left of the board first. So we have our 48 volt, which is our phantom power. You would only want to turn on phantom power for sources that require phantom power. This would be a condenser microphone or an active DI box. However, you would not want to turn on phantom power for something like a ribbon microphone because you would destroy the microphone. So make sure to read the owner's manual of the microphones that you have and see if they require phantom power or not. Chances are if you plug in a microphone and it doesn't make any sound and you know that the cable is good and you know that the microphone is good, it requires phantom power. So anything from a large diaphragm to a small diaphragm condenser microphone or active DI boxes would require phantom power. So to do that and turn that on, all you have to do is press 48 volt. Now, if you do this, make sure you do have the channel muted in the PA and ask all of your band to take out their in-ears as turning on phantom power will sometimes send a little bit of a spike down the audio path. So make sure you do that so you don't harm anyone's ears. The next thing that we have is our polarity reverse switch. Now, this is incorrectly labeled as phase reverse, and that is actually not what it's doing. It is not changing the phase. It is changing the polarity of the wires, and you would use this for fixing any XLRs that are maybe wired incorrectly, or you can also use this for the top microphone, bottom microphone issue that you have on a snare drum, where the top microphone is going to have a positive voltage swing, and the negative microphone on the bottom is actually going to have a negative voltage swing. And so on a snare drum, you would typically reverse one of the microphones to have those microphones in polarity with each other. Phase is actually a time thing. And so timing on that, it, we can solve in the delay section, which I'm going to be talking about here in a second. But to simply reverse the polarity of our channel, we would just press this button. We have our gain knob right here, and this is actually how we're going to set gain of a microphone going into this console. So we can take this and raise it or lower it depending on where you want to set your gain on. There's a meter right here, which you can see that there is signal, and that signal light would turn on if your volume of that channel is anything above negative 60 dB. Your clip light is something that you don't want to hit as that would indicate that you are overdriving the signal and it is going to cause clipping of that channel. A good meter that you'd want to set your signal for is the negative 18 or negative 12 light as that will give you a good amount of headroom before clipping. The next thing that we have is our low cut, and this is a low cut button as well as the frequency knob that the low cut is set off of. So we can see that if we press low cut and we adjust this knob, we're going to see over on our LCD screen that that is adjusting that low cut. Now this is simply going to remove any low end information that you don't want on a microphone. I'll actually typically put this on a kick drum at say 30, 35 hertz because anything lower than that is just taking up extra power of the subwoofers, and you can actually get a little bit more punchy of a kick drum sound by rolling off the low end. I would also set this on a vocal microphone, as most vocalists are not going to be producing subwoofer information. So anytime that I'm using a low cut, I'm just thinking in my mind, am I wanting to hear this through the subwoofer? Chances are, if that's a no, you want to turn on the low cut. Next, let's go ahead and look over at the LCD section of the board as we have a few more options on this that we have rather than just our configuration preamp section over here. Now, uh, one thing that we can see is that we have our input section. So if I have 
channel one selected over here, I can actually pull this from any of the 32 uh, inputs as well as the auxiliary inputs that are on the back of the board. So if I was wanting to have input 32 on my channel one, I would simply press select. And now that has channel one with input 32. And down on the scribble strip, we can see that this is channel one, and it also says in 32 on it. I don't want to have that be set that way, so I'm going to scroll all the way back up to input one and press select. Now you'll also notice that there's an off right here, so if you press off, it'll actually completely black out this channel strip. Now that can be useful if you're wanting to set up this console in say a kid's room or have an event scene that you pull up for memorials or events where you're not wanting to have all of the channels lit up. Maybe you just want to have your iPod and a couple microphones. You can use this to turn off a couple of these channels and not have them show. So let's go back to input one and press select. Now, link, this is our next thing that we have as far as an encoder that we can push. And what this is going to do is this is going to link channels one and two. You can't link channels two and three. It has to be an odd and an even number. So I can link channels three and four together, but not two and three. It can't be an even odd. And that's the way and the limitation of the Behringer X32. So if I was wanting to link channel one and channel two, all I would have to do is press link and then confirm. And then we can see that as I raise this up, the other is coming with it as well. I can also do this from the even channel, but when I press the link, it's going to ask me, do I want to link channel one and two? So yes, I do. There are uh, settings inside of our setup menu as far as what types of things you want to have linked in your preferences on your config tab of your setup menu. Jumping back over to our configuration section, the next thing that we have above this is our gain. So I can set the gain uh, with this rotary knob. Also, if I set my gain up here, it will obviously change on the LCD screen here. The next thing that I have is my delay. Now this is where I can actually solve phasing issues, which is time. So if I had one microphone a foot closer to the camera than I am right here. And I then had another microphone that was three feet away. So I have two feet of difference between this microphone over here and this microphone right here. Two foot difference. So what I would want to do is I, if I wanted to have both of these microphones sounding correct and not have any comb filtering or delay or phasing issues, then I would want to put a delay on the closer microphone to actually delay that in time to meet with the farther microphone. So I'm going to say that this microphone that's closer to me is channel one and this channel is channel two. So I'm going to place a two foot delay between this microphone and this microphone. Now, timing with the speed of sound changes with what temperature it is. So this gets uh, a little tricky, but you can get a pretty good roughed in measurement with this, uh, but you will need to use your ears to see if it sounds correct or not. But, so we have our channel one, I'm wanting to put a two foot delay on this. So we can see the delay and we have 0.3 feet. So I'm going to adjust this until it gets to two feet. There's my two foot section, and then I'm going to press delay. Now, what this has done is this has delayed microphone one and made it in time with microphone two. So now if I talked in, uh, to both of these microphones at the same time, even though the channel one is closer to me and channel two is farther away from me, in time, as far as the console goes, they are in time and in phase with each other. Phase is related to time. So a polarity wouldn't fix this two foot difference between these two microphones. So that's what we can use delay for. This is useful for delaying your toms into your overhead microphones. We can delay our toms to actually be in time with the overheads. We can also use this for delaying a kick in with the kick out microphone. So say you had your kick out microphone about a foot away from your kick in that's maybe inside the kick drum. You can use this to delay those two microphones to be in time with each other. So that's a couple of things that you can do with this delay function. The next knob that we have is our low cut. So we can see what hertz it is or what frequency we have. And then we can also press 
and turn on or off the low cut. If it's lit, it's on. If it's not, it's off. So we can see that I have an option between 400 hertz all the way down to 20 hertz available on this rotary knob. A good place to start is about 100 hertz if you're not wanting things to go into your subwoofer. Most companies will put their crossover frequency on their subwoofers around the 80 to 120 hertz range. So if you're wanting to have a good starting point from where to start your low cut, I would have that about 100 to 120 if you're not wanting anything going into your subwoofer. The next thing that we have is our insert section of our configuration and preamp tab. Now, insert position is the first thing that we can select on our rotary knob. So we have the ability of taking it post or pre. Post or pre what? Well, this is post dynamics, EQ, gate, low cut, and delay. Our pre would be pre, EQ, and pre dynamics. But this would still be post gate, low cut, and delay. So this is where we want to tap our insert point. Now there's inserts that we can actually insert on the channel in our effects section, or you can use your aux inputs and outputs on the console if you were wanting to actually insert a physical insert on this channel. So to do that, I have my insert section here. And so I can go and find a uh, effects section. So if I was wanting to put in a graphic EQ from effects seven left, then I can insert this. So I can press connect and then I can press insert. And now what this means is that channel one is going to go pre insert and if I was wanting to switch that to post, I'd simply move it to post. And then we can go over to our effects section and we can see that channel one is inserted on effects A on this graphic EQ. Now, if I was wanting to do this with a physical aux, then I could go into aux one and I can press connect. Now, this would mean that my audio is coming out of channel one into my aux out one and then my audio input after I connect that physical piece of audio gear that I'm wanting to insert on this channel, the output of that piece of gear would need to come into aux in one, and then that would come back into my channel one before it actually goes to my main bus. Now we would only want to use an aux insert if we were wanting to actually insert a physical piece of hardware as the insert on this channel. And it is going to cause a little bit of extra latency on this channel due to the analog to digital and digital to analog conversions that happen with doing it this way. Now, the very last thing that we have is the utility button. And typically this will pull up a hidden menu if there is one available on the view that you're currently on. So if we hit utility, it does bring up the preset library and automatically it has HA config and name selected because we are in the configuration section of the board. So we can see that we can load a preset from here and we would be loading the HA config, which is our head amp configuration, and the name and icon as well. So that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this makes you feel more confident in your production gear that you have there uh, at your home, church, or venue. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel as I'm always putting out brand new content on production gear and as always is free. So thank you so much for watching.